So I just spent the last two weeks in Hawaii and man did I enjoy it. And also two weeks in Hawaii means two weeks with my favorite toys. The X3 and the Mini 3 Pro which I already have two videos on which I will link down in the description if you want to check those out. That's the one year later review or 13 months later review of the Mini 3 Pro, which is definitely something you need to check out. I also took the Avada and the Mavic 3 Classic to Hawaii this time, and I must say the Mavic 3 Classic was probably the drone I was the most excited to test out, because when I first got this, we were entering the winter season here in Norway, which means everything is basically dead or white. And if you've seen my previous Mavic 3 Classic videos, you probably remember that I tried to sell this drone for about three months, but parts of me still wanted to hold on to it to see how this was to travel with and the differences between this and the Mini 3 Pro. So until now, the Mavic 3 Classic for me personally has just felt like a waste of money because it's something I don't really need when I'm making videos here on YouTube. The Mini 3 Pro is more than enough for my use. I even see people still rocking the Mini 2 and pushing out high quality exports. So in today's video, I'm gonna run you through my personal experience traveling with the Mavic 3 Classic and also my honest opinion on whether or not I think it's worth investing in something like this or if you should just stick to a Mini 3 Pro. After all, I spent $2,000 on the Mavic 3 Classic here in Norway, so I think you deserve to know whether or not it was a good investment. Because I mainly get these drones to shoot aerial footage from the places I visit, so I prefer it to be small, lightweight, have amazing video quality, and if it's dead silent, that would be a plus as well. Now, let's do a quick recap of the camera. The Mavic 3 Classic has a micro four third seamless sensor with an adjustable aperture from f2.8 to f11. It shoots 4K up to 120 FPS slow motion and 5.1K videos up to 50 FPS in H.264 and H.265 and takes 20 megapixel photos and has a flight time up to 46 minutes. It has 12-bit RAW, 12.8 stops native dynamic range and color profiles like normal, HLG and 10-bit D-Log where the latest update added D-Log M which is slightly closer to the Cinelike which we see in the Mini 3 Pro but D-Log M is also a less flat profile profile which makes color correction and grading a bit easier. The Mavic 3 Classic is also packed with a ton of features to help any pilot achieve better videos as well as obtaining a safe flight. It also features a 360 degrees omnidirectional obstacle sensors which protects the drone and creative tools like active track, quick shots, master shots, waypoints and cruise control just to mention a few. But I also have an in-depth video of the Mavic 3 Classic which I will link down below so I can keep this video as short and straight to the point as possible with the actual experience I've had traveling with this drone and my take on it. So there you have the short version of the features and what you can basically expect if you get a Mavic 3 Classic. Now let's move over to the image quality coming from the Mavic 3 Classic and its micro four third SEMA sensor, which by the way, is insane. Now, compared to any other drone that I've used here in Hawaii, the Mavic 3 Classic is by far the best drone. But that's kind of obvious, isn't it? It has the latest camera technology from DJI, so it's gonna perform better than any of the previous models I've used. But instead of me just talking about how awesome this drone is with its Micro Four Thirds SEMA sensor camera, its Hasselblad, you know, 5.1K resolution, all the specs you can basically find on DJI's own website. Wouldn't it be better if I showed you a cinematic sequence shot here in Hawaii so you can see for yourself what this drone is capable of. Everything is shot in 5.1K resolution at 30 and 50 FPS. I've used the D-Log color profile and everything has been color graded with my signature LUTs, which has a discount in the description below. Now, let's take a look at the beautiful Hawaii captured with the Mavic 3 Classic.
by far the best drone that I've ever flown. It's just amazing how good this drone is. But like most of you already know, I love traveling around with the Mini 3 Pro because of its size and weight. So how is it traveling around with a drone twice the size of a Mini 3 Pro and also almost four times the weight of a Mini 3 Pro coming in at just under 900 gram? To be honest, there's not much difference when I was out shooting with these two drones. I also had a few other devices with me and I had everything in my backpack. So taking one of the drones out, I didn't feel much difference to be honest. The Mavic 3 Classic is of course bigger, so depending on your backpack or shoulder bag, it could be challenging to fit. But 99% of the time, you can put this in the same bag or shoulder bag as you do with the Mini 3 Pro. It might be a bit on the tight end, but let's say the Mini 3 Pro shoulder bag. It's totally doable. And I didn't get the feeling of the Mavic 3 Classic being big. It was still comfortable traveling around with. But one thing that can actually add to the weight of this setup here is the batteries. The batteries weighs, I believe, 335.5 grams, which is more than the Mini 3 Pro with the battery attached. So that's also something to consider if you need a lot of these batteries. I mean, 46 minutes of flight time, you would probably, you know, you could probably settle with uh, with two or maybe three, but that will definitely add to the total weight of your backpack. So that's also something to consider. Should you invest in an additional battery or two extra batteries, or should you get a power bank instead? or maybe a car charger, which I will come to in a bit. But the battery for the Mavic 3 Classic is also 5,000 milliamp hours, which kicks in at 46 minutes of flight time, which feels like forever, to be honest. It really feels like forever, especially when you're coming from something like the Mini 3 Pro, which has uh, an average of 24 to 25 minutes of flight time with the standard batteries. Also depends on where I fly and how I fly, but it's, you know, it's two different worlds, flying the Classic versus flying the Mini 3 Pro, especially with the standard batteries. So when I was doing one of my favorite hikes here in Hawaii, which is the Lanikai Pillbox, I took a short break at the middle ridge to capture some shots with the Mavic 3 Classic. But this break was not short. I'm gonna tell you that, it felt like forever. And when the battery hit the 50% mark, I flew out to Mukunui, which is one of the two islands just outside of Lanikai Beach, also known as the Mokes. And I was just flying around shooting some videos, taking some photos, and you know, just having a good time. But it just took forever to drain the battery or at least that's what it felt like. So I flew back to where I was standing and basically ran out of ideas. I had filmed everything I wanted to film from multiple angles and it started to get boring and the battery was only at 25% or so. So basically packed up, finished the hike and went to a different location. And if I didn't mention it, I only have one battery. I was still unsure whether or not I should keep this drone or actually sell it. So I didn't want to pay for an additional battery. But having the DJI car charger was highly appreciated. And this 65 watts charger really put some juice into these batteries when I'm driving around. And at the next location, it was already peaking at 80% battery. So if there's one accessory I can really recommend, it would be the DJI car charger. There's also so many different car chargers out there, which claims to put out a 75 or 100 watt charge. Some might, but you know, having something which is 100% reliable and something that actually works, I take that any day. So the DJI car charger is something I've been using for a very long time now, and it's something that I can strongly recommend. It is a little bit pricey, but it's definitely worth it. So go check it out down in the description below. The Mavic 3 Classic is also packed with features. And for this trip, I found myself using Spotlight the most since I was quite limited on time. This allowed me to just select the target I wanted to be tracked and then I could just freely move the sticks around up and down and from side to side as well as tilting the camera. I also used cruise control a few times just to experience that lazy way of shooting high quality videos. And uh, all these features delivered every single time. And I'm still amazed over how good this drone actually is. Ever since I got this, I've been flying here in Norway. It's been, 
you know, gray, dead, and white, uh, winter, and it's, you know, not the reason I get a drone. So to actually be able to fly this in Hawaii now has been totally awesome. And not to mention the photos coming from the Mavic 3 Classic. I mean, I love the photos coming from the Mini 3 Pro, both in vertical mode, horizontal mode, the 48 megapixel photos, the normal 12 megapixel photos, but the 20 megapixel photos coming from the Mavic 3 Classic, whew. I mean, I shot this the first thing in the morning, the day after we arrived. I mean, I could just as well have purchased this from a store. But this was not the only photo that I took, which kind of blew my mind. I went around the entire island and for every single video I shot, I took at least 10 photos. I'm just amazed with the photo quality coming from the Mavic 3 Classic and it really has left me to think whether or not, you know, which one will be in my travel bag. Yes, the Mini 3 Pro is one of a kind, but so are you, Mr. Mavic. Now, when it comes to wind, like I said, I took both the Mavic 3 Classic and the Mini 3 Pro to Hawaii. And in my recent Mini 3 Pro one year later review, which is linked down in the description below, I talk about using this in the extreme winds and gusts and what you need to look out for when you're flying in these conditions. And a huge reason for bringing these two drones to Hawaii was to see if the Mini 3 Pro could capture the same stable footage as the Mavic 3 Classic in extreme winds and gusts. The Mavic 3 Classic had no issues with these conditions and no issues in wind at all. And I was able to capture some amazing footage of the waves just slamming into the shoreline and it was just epic. And this is what you get with a bigger drone like the Mavic 3 Classic, which is both bigger and stronger and also also heavier than a Mini 3 Pro. But the Mini 3 Pro didn't have any issues either. It was working perfectly fine. It shot the same stable footage as the Mavic 3 Classic in the same conditions. The only thing was at some points there was some slightly wobbling to the footage when I played it back in post. But most of those shots were shots I didn't, you know, want to keep anyway. But in some situation, you might have the wobbling to the parts of the video that you want to keep. So if you have some slightly wobbles to your Mini 3 Pro footage, just add some post-production stabilization and you have the most stable footage anyway. It's just to add that extra stability because in some shots, even with the Mavic 3 Classic, I could see there was a little bit of up and down. And that's also because I was flying close to the water and the reflections and everything is messing with the sensors underneath the drones here so which might cause some of that up and down movements but like i said mini 3 pro had no issues flying in the same conditions as the mavic 3 classic so for wind all in all mavic 3 classic no issues mini 3 pro might experience some issues but those are pretty easy to fix in post-production by adding some stabilization now, one thing which applies to both the Mini 3 Pro and the Mavic 3 Classic is the DJI RC controller. I mentioned this in my one year review of the Mini 3 Pro as well, but this is huge. It's such an amazing controller to use and even in bright conditions. Yes, in bright conditions. I know a lot of people are complaining about the useless 700 nets and that it sucks in bright conditions and that you always have to seek out some shade to use it, really. I don't. At times it could be hard to see, but I can always see what I'm filming, where I'm flying and the flight details which is needed for a safe flight. So personally, I don't have any issues with this in bright conditions. Yes, it's going to be a little bit tricky to see if the sun is sitting right above the controller, uh, but then, you know, it helps to just turn the controller in a different direction. So I don't have any issues. That's that's my honest opinion about this controller. I also made a full dedicated video on this controller because there was so many questions about it. So I'll leave that down in the description below as well if you wanna check out my review of this controller. But like I said, honestly, no joke, I don't have as much issues with this in bright conditions. If I had any issues with this, I would have bought the uh, RC Pro controller, but since I still have this, I'm gonna use this personal experience, personal opinion, you might think different. Now, as for my experience, my flight experience, my opinion, everything seven months later with the Mavic 3 Classic, is it worth getting? Yes. If you have the budget, 
get it. You will do yourself a favor. There's nothing better than the Mini 3 Pro, but if you have the budget to buy the Mavic 3 Classic, do it because the image quality. Now that I'm coming from Hawaii and I've been flying these two every single day, looking at the footage side by side, you know, the Mavic 3 Classic, the, the strongness, the, you know, the durability of this is on a completely different level than the Mini 3 Pro. You can't expect that because it's also at a higher price. It's $750 if I'm not mistaken or somewhere in between there. And I paid $2,000 for this here in Norway. I even think it was more. I think it was probably $2,200 for this. And that was with the RC controller. Luckily, I could sell the new one, which I got with the um, Mavic 3 Classic. So got a little bit of a refund there. Personally, my favorite drone has always been the Mini 3 Pro ever since I picked it up a year ago. And the Mini 3 Pro has been a better drone for me personally than any other drone that I've owned in the past. And that says a lot, I think. And to be honest, do I need more than this to make videos here on YouTube? Well, that's debatable. It's what you want and it's, you know, personal opinions and budget and all of that. But the quality that I'm seeing from the Mavic 3 Classic here in Hawaii, it's just amazing. It's so crisp. And I can see myself using this Mavic 3 Classic more than the Mini 3 Pro when I'm traveling to places like Hawaii. Or, well, it depends. If I'm shooting videos in the forest, which is actually one of my favorite things to do, I prefer to fly the Mini 3 Pro, which is more subtle and easier to fly in tight places. But for a bird's eye type of open area type of shots type, I can see myself putting up the Mavic 3 Classic every time. However, the Mini 3 Pro will always be the first choice if I can only pick one of these drones. But from what I'm seeing now with the shots from Hawaii, you know, I have to bring two drones. So there you have my seven months later long-term review of the Mavic 3 Classic. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found some valuable information about my experience with the Mavic 3 Classic. And if you did, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like button down below. And that would be appreciated. And all the links to everything used in this video will be down there as well. Also the signature lights with a discount. Links to the Mavic 3 Classic and the Mini 3 Pro will be down there too. And if you already have the Mavic 3 Classic, where is your favorite place to fly? Let me know in the uh, comment section below. And until next time, take care and uh, I will see you in the next video.